What is going on my friends? It's great to be back with you guys for another video. My name is Ryan Williams and I have a very, very special video plan for you guys. Today, I'm giving you a brand new dividend portfolio spreadsheet that you can use to track all of your dividend stocks. Now, a lot of you guys have already been using the spreadsheet that I first created a few months ago. And with the help of your guys' feedback, I have gone through and made some adjustments, made some upgrades to this spreadsheet that should hopefully give you some better insight into your portfolio and hopefully make it a little bit easier to use as well. So in this video, guys, we are going to be running through the spreadsheet version 2.0. I'll show you guys how to use the spreadsheet, you know, get started, get set up, and get rocking and rolling. I'll show you all of the changes that I made, and I'll also directly respond to some of the comments that I've gotten about how to use the spreadsheet. And if you guys want to follow along as we're going throughout the video, the link to the spreadsheet is in the description of this video. It's free of charge. You guys just go click the link, and you can start putting in your own info as we're going through it together. And last thing, before we get rocking and rolling, if you guys like what you see on the spreadsheet, please give this video a big thumbs up. It would tremendously help this video get pushed out to other dividend investors here on YouTube who are in desperate need of, of a spreadsheet to track all of their dividend stocks. Anyway, thank you guys so much for doing that. I really appreciate it. And now, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright guys, now what we are looking at here is version 2.0 of the Dividend Portfolio Tracker. Now, the first thing I want to do before I show you guys how to get set up and get started using this portfolio is compare some of the differences just at a glance, very brief. So this is the updated version of the portfolio, and now I'm going to switch over to the original version. So just right off the bat, you can notice that it looks somewhat different. There's something different going on here. You can see that within here. But also, as I switch back, take a look down here at all these tabs. See how those are different. So current, the before version. Current, before. So as you guys can see, I've added a couple sheets to this spreadsheet so there's a little bit more information for you to access. And I'll go through all of this stuff as we go throughout the video. I just wanted to show you guys that at a glance so you know kind of what we're working with. Okay, now moving on, if you've already been using this spreadsheet, then you should already know how the spreadsheet works and how to input information. But for those of you who are seeing this for the first time, I'll go through it real quick. The very first thing you're gonna do, if you guys have clicked the link in the description to open this spreadsheet, you'll notice that you don't have the ability to make any changes or add your information to this portfolio yet. All you have permission to do is view it and check it out. So we need to get you to a place where you can start inputting your own information. So once you click the link to open the spreadsheet, all you're gonna do is go to the top here and go to file and then go to make a copy. And then yeah, that all looks good. So just hit okay. Okay, great. Now once you've done this and made a copy, you should be able to start inputting your own information. And it's very simple from here, guys. What this reflects, everything in yellow is stuff that you have to manually input information for. Everything that's not highlighted in yellow will automatically populate. So let's go through and make a little sample portfolio here. Let's maybe have Coca-Cola. Maybe we've got some AbV, and I'm just pulling these off the top of my head, guys. Maybe we've got some Exxon Mobil. We've got some Verizon. And let's choose one more. Maybe we've got some Starbucks. So as you can see, as we've started putting in the tickers over here, some of this information has already started to get rocking and rolling. And once you have this down, guys, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is copy this next batch of information over from your, your actual brokerage, the number of shares that you have and the average cost per share of each of your stocks. Now in this example, guys, let's just say we have 10 shares of each stock in this portfolio. Um, and then we're just gonna use the current share price as the average cost per share to make it easy. So 54.89, 114.84. All right, great. Now once we put this in, you guys probably noticed that some of this started to populate as well. Um, which is what we want. So as, as we build out the portfolio here, more information will come to life. So moving on, let's scroll to the right here. So now let's put in the industry or what sector these stocks are in. So Coca-Cola is obviously consumer staples. Abby is healthcare. Oops. Exxon Mobil's energy. Verizon is communications. And Starbucks is consumer discretionary. And moving on, I don't know the annual dividend payments off the top of my head, so I'm gonna look each one up on Seeking Alpha real quick and input them right here. Uh, I'm just gonna skip ahead so you guys don't have to watch me do it. It might take me just a minute and it could, could be boring for you guys. All right, great. Now that we've input this information right here, guys, we can see that the dividend yield and the yield on cost automatically populated once we put this information here. Now moving on, what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm just gonna go through and input the five-year CAGRs, years of payment, and years of growth 
Um, once again, this could be boring, so I'm just gonna skip ahead and complete this for you guys so you don't have to watch me. All right, guys, now that that is done, we are pretty much locked and loaded, all done inputting information on this portfolio summary page. And some of this information we've put here will carry on over to some of the other pages, which we'll see. But real quick, before we get to that, we can see that some of this information is still missing. And that has to do with all of these extra rows right here. So why don't we get rid of these guys? We don't need them anymore. And then once we do that, we should see some of these populate for us. Awesome, great, that looks a lot better, guys. So this part of the portfolio is officially complete. And let's move on to the next page. So actually, real quick, before we move on to the next page, I did not address this down here. So in the first part of the portfolio, we can see that below this portfolio summary was a watch list. But if we go back to version 2.0, we can see that I just moved that over into its own sheet right here, which we'll briefly touch on this a little bit. But going back here, we can see that the watch list on this page was replaced by some key stats on your portfolio, like the daily gain in both percentage and dollars, uh, the total gain of your portfolio, just overall, both in percentage and dollars. Also, you can see at a glance your annual dividend income and the current market value of your portfolio. Additionally, this little thing right here breaks down your dividend payment by time. And this was on the previous version of the portfolio. I just decided to put it on the portfolio summary page because it's kind of fun to look at. All right, guys, now getting into some more the nitty gritty changes um, from version 1.0 to 2.0 on this portfolio summary page. Uh, we can see, just comparing them again, there are a couple extra columns added here. So in the old version of the spreadsheet, I didn't have this day change per share in dollars and percents. Um, I also added a couple columns over here. This five-year CAGR, the years of payment and the years of growth is something that is only in version 2.0 as well as the X dividend date. So those are the columns that I added in version 2.0 to this page right here that we're missing from version 1.0. It's not a ton of information, but I'm slowly adding more insights and more stuff like this over time. What I'd like to do while we're on the subject um, I really wanted to add like a payout date in addition to this X dividend date, but I couldn't figure out the formula and I couldn't get it to work. So if any of you guys know how to do that, please leave me a comment below. That's something I'd really like to add to this portfolio. All right, guys, now moving on to the next page. This is the watch list page and it looks very similar to the portfolio summary, but essentially guys, this is where you'll house all of the stocks that you're planning to buy in the future, the ones that you're keeping an eye on. And some of the columns are missing on this too. We don't need some of the information that we saw on the portfolio summary page, such as the you know total gain or the portfolio allocation because it really doesn't apply to stocks that you don't own. So long story short, this is just the watch list page. And instead of it being down at the bottom, this portfolio summary, I just made it its own sheet. I felt like it looked cleaner. Um, and I just felt like separating them makes more sense. All right, guys, now moving on to the diversification page of this portfolio. This really hasn't changed too much. I was very happy with this. The only thing I added was this key stats down here, which is the same thing that we saw both on the watch list and the portfolio summary. I wanted to put it on every page of this spreadsheet, um, just so you don't have to keep bouncing around to see how your portfolio is currently doing. So, But one note on this page, while we're here, we can see that some of these are screwed up, the actual allocation versus target allocations. I got a lot of questions about this actually, and so I'd like to go through and fix some of this stuff. I'm not gonna do it for every single sector here. I just wanna give you guys an idea of how to fix this if you're getting this error message. So let's start with communications here. And, and just a little overview, this table right here is supposed to add up all of the actual allocations of the stocks in your portfolio. Um, to show you how it's broken down by sector. So communications, we really, because we just have Verizon as the communication stock in this portfolio, this sample portfolio, it's gonna be pretty easy to, to put in here. So we want communications, we're gonna go to this at the top. And we want the communications tab right here, we want this cell to equal what Verizon is weighted in our portfolio. So let's erase this. So, and once you have the equal sign up here, you can just click over to portfolio summary find the portfolio allocation and where's Verizon right here. Click that, bada boom, bada bing. And let's do it one more just so you guys get the hang of it. So consumer discretionary, same thing. Let's erase this reference. Um, now that the equal sign is still there, let's click back over here, find Starbucks, which is our only consumer discretionary stock. Click that right there, hit enter, and it'll populate right there. And what you guys are gonna to wanna to do is just keep going down the line until you have all of these fixed, and then this should add up to 100% right here. If you don't have some of these sectors, or if you're missing some of these sectors, it's very easy to add and subtract them. So we don't have a utilities in here, so all we'd have to do really is just delete this column. And so as you guys can see, that, that fixed it right there, and we can keep doing it to just have the columns that, that we have in the portfolio. 
And once you guys have all these in order, this should automatically populate and add up to 100. But at least the pie charts here are working. That's really what's most important. So, all right, guys, now moving on to the next page. This is the monthly data page. Now, if you guys have been using version one of this spreadsheet, you'll know this is data sheet one. Um, this is data sheet one, and then this is monthly data. Essentially, the premise is the same with these pages. The layout is just a little bit different. I felt like this was cleaner. It's going to be easier to use as you go down the line. It's going to be easier to continue to expand this as time goes on. And real quick, I know this says 2020 up here, but if you guys started investing in you know this year, 2021, you can just change the um, years as need be. In fact, let's do that for this example. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to put in some, some information here just so you guys can see how it works. So once again, you'll see some of these things are highlighted in yellow, and that's where you're going to want to go manually input this information. And a lot of this information can be found from your brokerage statement that you receive every month. And you guys will see too, as we start inputting this information, everything to the right will begin to auto-populate. And some of the things that we'll learn from inputting this information is the total amount that was invested in that month, the interest, just the interest gain in that month in dollars and percents, and you'll also see the total unrealized gain of the portfolio in dollars and percents. So let's say you started investing this year in January and maybe in that first month you put in a hundred bucks and maybe you decided your plan is to invest 100 bucks every single month. So let's just continue to go down the line. So for the first year, you know, investing hundred dollars a month by December, you should have $1,200 as a cost basis. Same thing because you just invested hundred dollars every single month. We're just going to drag it down like that. So some of this stuff is already starting to go guys. And you know, let's say market value first month, maybe it was like 150, maybe the market value second month, maybe it's 275 and so on and so forth. Maybe seven. I'm literally just putting in random numbers, guys, just for the sake of this example. So now that the first year is done, guys, we can see all of the stats from the portfolio in the first year. And at the end of the first year, we had a $550 gain, an unrealized gain, which would be a 45.83% gain on your cost basis. And then hopefully by now you guys get the hang of it. Just each month when you get your brokerage statement, you can go ahead and input this information and keep track of it month to month. And as you do that, guys, let's move on to this next tab here. This is the annual data. I think it's cleaner just to separate monthly data and annual data and compare them that way. So as you guys can see, you're not going to have to input any information on this page. It's all going to auto-populate from the monthly data here. So it's very important that if you guys want to use this portfolio or if you guys want to use this spreadsheet to its fullest, fullest extent, you input this information on a monthly basis. It takes 30 seconds if you have the information. There's not, there's not much to this page right here. It's just going to show you your cost basis in, in each year, your market value, cash invested, and so on and so forth, dividend income, just some basic stats. And you can use this information to compare the performance of your portfolio as the years go on. And now the last table that I want to show you guys, um, or the last sheet, is this charts and graphs page right here. And this is something that's completely new, and this is something that I'm also going to be working to improve as time goes on. And so this page is pretty simple, guys. All these charts, or all these graphs show you right here is your total portfolio value, which you can see going up over time and your annual dividend income um, comparing year to year. So as you input information as the years go on, these will begin to auto-populate. And same with this, the chart will just keep growing and going up and continuing to add data to it, at least through 2023. So, and I, I would imagine I'll be putting out more updates to the spreadsheet before then. So don't, don't worry about tweaking this stuff too much yet. I mean, if you wanna add more years as an anticipatory thing, go ahead. But otherwise, I'm sure I'll be making more updates to this, so don't worry about it too much. All right, guys, now that's pretty much all of the updates I've made to this portfolio tracking spreadsheet. I hope it makes sense and I, I hope it looks cool to you guys. I'm excited to keep making improvements to this. I know there's a lot left that I could do and uh, I look forward to adding more information to it. Now, what I'd like to do from this point is I'd like to address some of the comments that I've gotten as it pertains to this spreadsheet. A lot of you guys are reaching out with some great questions and some great feedback. So I'd like to take the time now to directly address some of your comments and see if I can answer some of the questions you guys have. I've done so in the comments. I try to respond to all of them, but it might be helpful to see me actually do it live action in person here. So um, that's what we're gonna do. All right, guys, now starting with this first comment from my friend, Cool One. Cool says, hi, Ryan, new subscriber here. I was wondering if you would do a follow-up spreadsheet tutorial 
in the future, would it be possible to include some ideas on incorporating an ETF section? Thanks. Very helpful channel. Thank you so much for the comments. I know um, we talked briefly in the comment section, but let me but let me address uh, your question right now as it pertains to ETF. So I thought about how to incorporate an ETF section to this portfolio, but to be honest with you, I just I'm kind of thinking it's going to be best just to keep it all on this portfolio summary page. And what I'm kind of thinking, so if you add more rows here, so let's actually do this right now. Let's add a couple more rows. Let's say that in your portfolio, you have two ETFs in addition to these stocks. Maybe you have VTI and maybe you have SPHD. Oh, and let's copy the settings right here. We don't need to do it for everything. But anyway, I figured if you want to differentiate the ETFs from the actual stocks, what I would do is I would just highlight these two columns or these two rows or cells and just make it a different color here. Make it like, uh, you know, if you decide if you make all of these white, for example, you can make these like a, uh, like a light gray or something like that, one shade darker. So, you know, everything here is going to be an ETF or you can change the color however you want. But I figured that's going to be the easiest way just to differentiate between individual stocks and ETFs in my opinion. And with that said, if you have a better way that you want to do it, feel free. So because you guys can edit this portfolio tracker, you can make whatever changes you want to. You can add rows, add columns, add more information, take some away, delete some of these pages, add new ones. You can do whatever you guys want to this tracker. So if you have a, a way that you want to maneuver it, you know, go for it. Make, make this your own. Do whatever you want to it. All right, guys. Now the next comment is from my guy, Antonio. He says, Hi, Ryan. Is that possible to put the prices in euros? Thank you. Great question, Antonio. Yes, it's totally, totally possible. Let me show you how to do that real quick. So let's say all of these things that are in dollars, you want to turn them into euros. So just highlight the cells that you want in euros, the format, number, more formats, more currencies, and then you can find euros here. Let's type in euros. Let me actually just scroll down here. Um, where is it? Right here, Euro. So do that, hit apply, and then everything is in euros from here on out. All right, guys, next comment. This is from Lucas Vot. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it at all. <laughs> Probably not. Lucas asks, can you compare with sites that track your dividend portfolio like digrin.com, trackyourdividends.com, dividend.watch, etc.? Like, how do you automatically get dividends in spreadsheets? To be honest with you, Lucas, that's a really great question. And that's actually something I haven't figured out myself. So as you guys can see, the annual dividend payments for each of these stocks, you have to manually go in and input yourselves, which can be tedious because they're always updating them as time goes on. And it can be especially tedious if you have a lot of stocks in your portfolio. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out a way to get this to auto-populate. That's something else I'd like to um, adjust for future versions of this portfolio, but I'm still learning how to do that. As soon as I do, though, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that because that's going to be a huge lifesaver. All right, now next comment is from Michael Abley. Michael asks, how do you put TSX stocks on it? I hold a lot of TSX stocks and would like to track their dividends. So, Michael, I know that we talked briefly in the comments about this, um, and I think that the stock that you asked me about in particular was TELUS or TELUS. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's ticker symbol T on the Toronto Stock Exchange, which uh, ticker symbol T here on the New York Stock Exchange. So to find out what it would be on the TSX, let's just hit up Google and then let's go TSX T. And then just by Googling that, just use this right here. So to get this to populate um, in the, the stock that you want, Instead of just putting T, you're going to have to put TSE colon T. Now, if we go back to the spreadsheet and we can test it out, so TSE colon T, enter, you can see that it shows up with the right one. Next comment from Rick Gilbert. First, thank you very much for offering this to us. It is much more detailed and much less manual than my own, and to give it for free is truly appreciated. Rick, you deserve it. I, I, I would do anything for you, man. <laughs> anyway, I do have a question regarding dividend reinvestment, as when I transferred my numbers over to your spreadsheet, they were slightly different than what I had in mind. If I purchase a stock for $300 and it pays a $10 dividend, which I reinvest, is that $10 considered new money? I was not adding it in as new money on my spreadsheet, maintaining my original cost at $300, and my, and my account is now worth $310. Your spreadsheet is adding in the 10, making my cost basis $310, and my account worth the same. I thought I knew the answer, but I have talked myself into believing each scenario is correct a couple of times. Again, I appreciate what you've done. Thanks for the help. Rick, that's a great question, and it's a very simple answer, too. I know we touched base in the comments, but for those of you who have the same question, let me address it right now. So let's say, hypothetically, 
you, you know, you get a dividend payment for Coca-Cola and maybe that, you know, Coca-Cola dividend was exactly $5. So what you're going to want to do is just update the number of shares and the average cost per share that you got from that dividend payment. So, so maybe with that $5 dividend, maybe that gave you like 10.1 shares of Coca-Cola and maybe that adjusted your average cost per share up a couple of cents. Maybe it was, you know, 54.91 now. And you can see that by doing that, it'll adjust your cost basis over here. All right, now last comment. This is from Guy just a couple days ago. Uh, this was on the very first dividend portfolio tracking video I put up. He says, this is a clickbait video. This supposedly free dividend tracker is only for viewers and cannot be used or edited. So guy, I did leave you a comment back. I don't know if you saw that and you're probably not even watching this, but um, for those of you, once again, who are having trouble making changes or inputting information to this spreadsheet once you click the link in the description of the video, what you need to do, you need to go to file, you need to go to make a copy and you need to make a copy of the spreadsheet. And then from there, you can go in and start inputting the information. All right, guys, well, that wraps it up for this spreadsheet update. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it made sense. I know I was a little bit all over the place here and there. With that said, if you guys have any suggestions for me on things I can add or ways to improve this spreadsheet, please leave me a comment below. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. I really try and take that into consideration when making these upgrades or making these adjustments, not to just make it better for myself to use, but you know, for you guys as well, because I'm offering it to you guys for free. So anyway, that's about all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you guys are still with me here at the end of this video and have not done so already, please don't forget to leave a like on this one before going on to the next video. And also, if you have enjoyed this video and you know aren't sick of hearing from me yet, please hit that subscribe button as well. So you can stay up to date on all the future videos I'm putting out, which at this point is two a week. I'm uploading every Wednesday, every Sunday. So there's a lot of good content coming your way. All right, and with that said, I will now get out of your guys' hair. Thank you once again so much for watching this video. It means a lot. Hope you guys have a good day and I will see you in the next one.